Good morning, Sovereign Grace Church family. It is so good to be with you uh, this morning, and what a privilege it is for me to be able to to be coming to you from my home, uh, from our home office, and to be able to share uh, in, in a little bit of the devotional that that uh, Warren has been doing now for the past four weeks. And uh, so grateful for my friend and the way that he's been serving us in this. And Warren has a well-deserved rest today. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and, and take this one, and you're going to be able to experience and hear from another one of our pastors here, Andrew, who will be sharing tomorrow. But uh, really grateful for the ways that Warren has served us and provided us with God's Word on a daily basis. Uh, and he's been laboring hard for us, church, because he loves us uh, and he desires to care for us. And so grateful for my friend and the way that he He's done that. And, and again, I have the privilege to be able to sit in this chair today uh, and to be able to do this and open God's word with you as we share uh, in God's word and in hearing from what uh, his word has to say to us today in the midst of a crazy pandemic, uh, one that is unprecedented, unprecedented in my lifetime. Uh, I dare say not throughout all of history, uh, but at least in the vast majority of the world's history uh, that we can recall. Um, this is just a very very, very difficult time in many ways, and probably the greatest difficulty outside of just the physical illness that takes place and, uh, and so many people that have succumbed to that and even actually have passed away because of that, but also because of the uncertainty uh, that really just hangs in the air right now. No one knows uh, what's going to happen uh, in just a few short, short weeks, yet alone uh, just tomorrow. Um, and in the midst of that, it is so good to be able to turn to God's word and know and be reminded that there is someone who does know, uh, who holds history all in his hands, um, and he is good and is loving and is caring for his ch children and his people even today. Uh, today's psalm that we're going to be reading is Psalm 103. It's a very familiar psalm. I know that many of you know this, and it's one that's dearly loved by, I'm sure, many, uh, including myself. And it's so good to, to be able to have God's Word, be able to speak to us in a way that lifts our eyes and our heads to remember the greatest news that we'll ever hear. Greater news than uh, the, the call of the pandemic being over and you can return back to jobs, to workplaces, to normal life, if you will. You can give people a high five uh, and you can hug people. Well, a greater news than all of that, the end of a pandemic, is what we have preserved here in Psalm 103 for us. I'm going to go ahead and read it. And I'm going to read primarily verses, just verses one through five with you, but I will highlight some of the other verses as well, just so that you see and get a taste for what this psalm is all about. This is a psalm of David, and it starts off with this, Psalm 1, 03, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy and satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, I love the beginning of this psalm as it repeats itself in the emphasis in verses one and two, where it just says to us, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. And then verse 2 kicks it right back up again. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And what we find at the end of verse 2 is the purpose, if you will, for why David wrote this communal song that was to be sung by the church when they gathered together. And in verse 2, it says this. This is the express purpose. And forget not all his benefits. Now, one of my favorite quotes um, by C.S. Lewis is where he wrote uh, uh, this statement. It says, we need to be reminded more often than we need to be taught. Now, this is an oversimplification because obviously we do need to be taught, but his point is, is, is really does, the sentiment really does hold true with this psalm because the reality is we forget, we are prone to forget who God is in the midst of trial, in the midst of adversity in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of there is so much that is prevalent in our day and in our age right now where there's so much uncertainty, where there's doom and gloom that is being predicted uh, that, that, that could happen. Uh, there's no question about it that it could happen. But in the reality, in all of this, um, we need to be reminded of who God is. 
And so in verses three through five, we see some of the reasons to bless the Lord. And this word bless the Lord, this phrase really literally means to speak well of the Lord. And it's, it's something that we do in our own souls, but it's something that we express audibly through our, through our spoken words. And it's also meant to encourage others. And so we see uh, these reasons to speak well of the Lord. If you look in verses two, excuse me, three through five, he asks a rhetorical question, asking this question, who? Who forgives all your iniquity? Who forgives all your sin? Who heals all your diseases? Not just physical healing it is in mind here, but metaphorically speaking, the healing of our hearts, if you will, from moral death and spiritual decay. Who redeems or who has paid the ransom price for your life from the pit and from the grave? Who crowns you with steadfast love and with mercy? And lastly, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Well, the answer to this rhetorical who question is there is no one else but God himself. See, God is the one who sent his son, Jesus, and through Jesus, he has provided for us the means and the way for our sins to be forgiven as he paid the sin price that we deserved by his death on a cross. He has healed us by giving us new hearts that now live for him, and he has redeemed us from the law of sin and death and has crowned us with daily steadfast love and mercy as Christians who have been adopted into God's family. And get this, church, God has committed to satisfying each and every one of our thirsting souls with his goodness. And he desires to do this on a daily basis for us. And so in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of COVID-19, what a great hope we have, church, to remember that our God is with us. He is committed to our goodness, and he has proven that already through the sending of his son. And so now as a church and as individual believers, we have the opportunity and the privilege to trust him, to say, nevertheless, whatever the news might be today, I'm going to trust in his goodness. I'm going to trust in his compassion. I'm going to trust that he cares. And so with that, Let's take a moment and let's just pray and let's ask the Lord to help us to remember him. Father, thank you for the privilege that we have to to encounter your word together. And thank you that your word does speak to our souls. And thank you that part of the, the fruit of your word in our lives is that it revives our souls. And so, Lord, by remembering who you are, I pray that our souls and our spirits and our hearts and our lives would be revived in you. Regardless of what's on the news and regardless of what we encounter today, Lord, you are the one who sits in in heaven. Lord, you are the one who controls all things and you are the one who has proven yourself, Lord, to be Uh, worthy of us speaking well about. All of this given to us through your precious son, Jesus. So Lord, help us to trust you today. Help us to remember who you are and your goodness and to be encouraged by that and to be able to share that with others today as well and people who desperately need to be reminded. Lord, help us, we ask this, for the sake of your great name, and to the praise of your glorious grace, Lord, and for your glory, we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, church. It's great to be with you. Love you. Miss you. Can't wait to see you in the flesh soon. Bye-bye.